And personally, I'm just so tired of talking to people. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. podcast. This first ad. When I do it like that, it makes it hard to insert the Spotify <laughs> ad part. I got to, I should have. You always got to think about Spotify, I don't do. you? I do. Got to make sure gotta, you, you're taking care of daddy gotta, Spotify. Got to keep those Swedes happy. <laughs> Uh, this first ad was sent by Luke Stellman. This is a hard luck King set of five matching finish in matte purple set of five hard luck Kings in matte purple finish, all unplayed in brand new condition. Les Paul, Stratocaster, Telecaster, Firebird and Explorer shipping could be arranged at the buyer's request. Otherwise it's local pickup in New York. They want $2,500 local pickup only. Uh, I'm not going to pay $2,500 when someone can't take a picture that's more, that's less than, that looks like, this, this, this is the smallest picture that I've ever seen on this show. Like, look at it. it it's hilarious how it looks on Reverb. Look at how tiny it is. Ryan, this picture has like four pixels. That's how tiny it is. This picture is like straight from 1996. Like this would have taken three minutes to load in 1996. So I went, I went around and I grabbed higher resolution photos of other Hard Luck Kings guitars of similar model. Yeah. I know they're not all, all exactly the same because their body styles and shapes and details would vary wildly from run to run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like even like this, like, you know, like Thunderbirdy style thing. The one I got a close up of is not at all the same. Like, look at the pickup. Pick art is totally different. And they're oh, like the, lo the lower horn is different. And I know they've had a few different shapes of like the Explorer. Um, Hard Luck Kings is a brand where I got really close a couple times to just buying one to do a video of them. And I didn't follow through because I realized the only reason I wanted to do it was to to try to troll the owner <laughs> because he very famously is a a prickly guy who does not respond to any criticism at all yeah like whatsoever like the, one of these people who like there's just you know forums and forums on the internet where people talk about the nasty emails they got because they're like hey my guitar showed up and there's major problems and he just berates mm -hmm. them and it's like oh the problem is you because you don't you don't appreciate fine quality craftsmanship and stuff like <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm paraphrasing here but uh, he's he's an interesting character, well documented as an interesting character, and also I couldn't talk myself into it because a a lot of what I was seeing online they they just kind of look bad, right? Like look at look at this strat thing here. There's something about it that just looks bad, and how do you make just a standard strat shape? just look cheap somehow it's kind of soft those pickups aren't doing it any favor like okay like the pick guard doesn't quite fit it right yeah so tier one i i'm i'm kind of uh i'm kind of an old school i guess you might say on this for me like st proper strat pickups are staggered visual like these are all visual things i'm not telling you what's good or bad on a strat you mean you mean the 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 poles yeah if if a strat has staggered pole pieces i'm like hello you have my attention if they are beveled and staggered that's that's right, right. that's a tear down i want that old school no bevel you want that hard edge yeah. on the magnet now some like you have like the mexican strats the older ones where it was no bevel but also no stagger that's that's also a well, thumbs these down almost look like mustang pickups because if the poles look flat across. that's exactly what i was going to say these look flat across these don't look like anything i mean mustang pickups if you take the covers off they look like right, this because that's why they have covers on right. them. right that's how you get those flat covers is you don't have staggered staggered poles i found a comment talking about hard luck kings uh 
from Ultimate Guitar. Somebody says, I get Harley Benton for edgy biker dad vibe from Hard Luck Kings. <laughs> Nothing aggressively bad about the guitars, but their headstock logo name and marketing just screams, are you over 55 and want to learn guitar? Of course, somebody did respond to that and say, well, I was 59 when I started learning guitar. So they are, they're guitars for, they're guitars that are branded towards adult adolescence. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, <laughs> are you, are you, are you 58 years old and you bought your first chain wallet? You might want a hard luck King. Yeah. But also like. I don't know if it's for sure. I don't know if it's true, but I, I've been hearing rumors that they, they're actually gone now, that they're out of business. Mm -hmm. Hard, mm -hmm. Hard Luck Kings is over. We don't know for sure. Their website is down. Yeah. And when you do business exclusively through your website and your website is down, that's usually a bad sign. Mm -hmm. usually means you're done. Um, I will say, though, when I was looking at these, Another thing that kept me from buying them is that every time I looked, they were out of the neon colors. And if I'm mm. going to get a hard luck King guitar, I'm going to get a bright neon green or pink or purple one. Like that's just what I'm going to do. I'm not, I'm not going to get some sort of like red metallic or sunburst or whatever. Like I want neon. Okay. And Ryan. they never had them in stock whenever I checked Ryan. Yeah. I want you to guess. Hopefully you cannot see the, re don't look at me. Don't I'm get, not looking. I'm don't not get looking. the reflection from my Hold glasses. Up. I want you to, I want, I'm going to read, read it to a me. post to you. And I want you to tell me where it's from. Geographically. Uh, yes. The geogra geography of the internet. Oh, so you asked me what site it's from. Yes. Okay. Just heard about hard luck. Kings guitars. I'm in a five finger death punch cover band. Of course you are. I beat my wife and pretend I was in the military. <laughs> Do you think these would be good for my purposes? I need to keep on a budget saving for a lift kit for my truck. <laughs> this from guitar circle jerk. Uh, I could smell it. I didn't even have to hear the words. <laughs> oh, there's an SG style available at the GC near me. I think it would suit your needs. PBR not included. And the OP says, Damn, I can't drink, but it'll make me gay. Remember when, that, <laughs> remember when that was a thing a year ago? Right, right. Oh, man. Oh, um, Remember how seriously everyone took Kid Rock's opinion? Yeah. No one took it seriously. Kid Rock doesn't have a valid opinion anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. You know, Hard Luck Kings is like the Kid Rock of guitars. And most people will probably be like, oh, what, don't you mean Schechter? No, that would have been like circa 2002. Yeah. That Schechter would have been the kid rock of guitars, but not anymore. Like he's, he's down a couple notches. He's on, he's on, he's fallen on harder times. <laughs> he's fallen in with a bad crowd. Yeah. And so, I don't mean a bad crowd in like a sexy, exciting way. I mean, like kind of just annoying and boring. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, I don't, I don't, I don't wish ill on any company owner. Uh, it's, you know, it always sounded like he had customer service kind of issues, right? Uh, you know, people would be like, ah, oh, this showed up not great. And then he would flip out on them and things like that. And then it'd be a fun story on the internet. There's uh, a lot of those. Oh, that happens from, from, from brand to brand that, yeah. that can happen, but there are a lot concerning this particular brand, but this person wants $2,500 for a matching set of five in purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't hate the purple. I don't, I cannot imagine myself paying 500 each for a hard luck King guitar. Like the, in my mind, they're 250 at best. I can't imagine wanting five of these. I know. Um, and yeah, it is kind of hard. I'm looking for like even a single instance. They do have like custom series ones that I'm seeing sure. on uh, there's And the problem is there's also just not a ton of examples. Um, and I'm not finding anything. The price ranges on this are from as low as $300 uh, to as high as like $800. It's actually a le one of these Les Paul copies for two fifty in natural that looks a lot better than this purple, in my opinion, um, on reverb. So I I don't know. Um, I feel like uh, twenty five hundred is too much. You're asking someone yeah. to buy five of these things. 
This should be like twelve hundred tops. Well, I think this tops. This person is is trying to. They're assuming, oh, matching set that makes them more valuable, because you know, like they're 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 all synced together. It's a collection. You wouldn't want to separate them. No one should have a collection of of these of no. these. Like that's. It's not like they're like some sort of like you know top shelf artist made Fender custom shop where it's like you put them together and they form a complete picture. These yeah. do not yeah. need to be together. To, they don't need to be together for the rest of their life. They are five individual guitars that happen to be the same color. Yeah. Like, no, like they don't need to be kept together. There's uh and there will be functionally no collector's value. Oh, these. zero. I, I can't imagine. I no. can't imagine. These are only collectible. These are only, collectible because they're guitars so this guy's trying to price them like oh because they're all together the same color yeah no no there's there's no up charge on that these are in my mind 250 dollars guitars at best if you can find someone who's interested in them because the, you get on the internet and the stories aren't great you know but but you know you buy them used it means you can actually vet them you could you yeah. could he yeah. wants local pickup only you know, you see this out on Craigslist or whatever, you go check them out. You can be like, uh, I like this one. I don't like that one. I like this one. I don't like that well, one. Also, normally for when you Which sell... Which makes it safer than ordering when one you sell, directly because who knows what will show up and you'll have no customer service. Yeah, when you sell this many together, you almost feel like you should be giving a discount. I'm trying to think of like... Right, this should, this there, should honestly be a thousand bucks. Yeah, the, there's places where I could see collections of guitars being upsold like it when prs first did their first run was it was, was it the silver sky that came in like two colors sure like if you had both of those and you were like i want to sell these as a pair because it's the full color of the f full run of the first c set of colors right um if you have you know uh two 1965 like a 65 strat and a 65 telecaster in three tone sunburst, like you sell that as a pair, like, like that, that's a cool thing that I think somebody is going to be like, I need that pair, right? Right, five purple hard luck kings. Because at the end of the day, I mean, honestly, like if you have a like a like the Karina trifecta, yeah, Gibson, Gibson, you know, you have an Explorer, you have a Flying V, and then you have a Modern somehow, yeah, you yeah. know, like obviously that's a set and you sell them together all the same year. They, you know, you bought them all at the same time or whatever. And they lived in, in granddad's closet. Obviously you don't separate those. Do you know who this appeals to? Who? Firefly owners. This is the this same is, kind is of thing too that pricey. Firefly. It's too it is, pricey it for is them. It is too pricey. Uh, friend of the show, Snarky, every time they release a midnight galaxy Firefly, he buys it now. I think he has three. He did return. I think he had four, uh -huh. but he returned one because the one of the ones he got wasn't like, it was like uh, the clear coat was already clouding or something. Ooh. There was something odd going on. Yeah, yeah. The clear. I don't know if it was the clear or the black was came out more of like a really, really dark gray. Yeah. But like, that's his thing. He's like, oh, I got to get these midnight galaxy, whatever sparkle. Like there's people who do those with with Firefly. There's probably sure, sure. people who do that to some extent with like Harley Benton's. Um, mm -hmm. But you do it because you do it. Like, and when you right. sell those, you shouldn't be upcharging people for them. I see people. Maybe this isn't an upcharge. I don't know. I see people try to flip Fireflies on local Craigslist, and it's it's so wild to me. Like people are trying to get four hundred bucks for them and stuff like no. that. Like, no, no, just uh, no, don't. <laughs> It's interesting too because the the things I like they're fine. Like I know the new, the newer ones are, are a lot better too. Yeah. But like come on. Well, come and, on. and so that's the thing I was gonna say is that's the, the thing that's funny is is it's a lot of times it's the older. Well, you don't know how old they are, but you assume they're older if they're already on the used market. But the stories from people I know who have them, uh, whether in our group or in I'm in the Firefly fan group, whatever on mm -hmm. Facebook, they talk about all the time how the guitars are improving. Uh, maybe not in like sequential batches, but if you compare like a batch from a year ago, sure. to like the average guitar from a batch a year ago versus the average guitar in a batch. Now the average is improving with over, well, over cheap, time, which cheap, is good, which is good. It is good. But cheap guitar manufacturing is improving across the board. Yeah, Like yeah. I, I, you know, this is two weeks later, but I just filmed this thing. This is a $160 guitar off of Amazon 
and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Like, I just, I, I couldn't like Steve, Steve was looking at it and he's like, and I was like, Oh, maybe the switch feels a little cheap. It feels a little bit clunky, but, but the rest of it, like 160 bucks, this thing is, is like really, really way better than it should be. Like all guitar manufacturing for the, the cheap stuff is up across the board as far, as far as quality goes. Like you can't survive right now yeah. and be popping out cheap quality guitars that suck. Like people demand these guitars be decently playable because there's so many on the market that are. No, so that's it's like a popular body. If like I was impressed with the first Firefly that I covered what like five six years ago. Yeah. If I got that guitar now, I wouldn't be impressed with mm. it now. I'd be like, oh wow, this this has a lot. You know, there's a lot to be desired here because the cheap guitar market has changed so much, even in that short time. Darn, I'm looking up the specs on that Fesley. Yeah. We get so many offers to get guitars from them. I feel I like I should get one. <laughs> uh, that's one of those brands that like 10 different people have emailed me from them. And I'm like, I'm already working with you guys. So why, why do new people keep emailing me? Like, yeah. and they keep trying to pitch other products and it's like, eh, I just really kind of want to cover the, the guitars. So maybe I, I would love to cover another one and they have like a super strat style thing. Yeah. They've that, got some other models, but they, they also send an email about their floorboard modeler. Like, mm. nah, I, I'm, I can skip that. I'm not going to do that. But also I would, I'm going to con, I'm going to recon, you know, this is probably already said and done. By the time this episode airs, I'm going to contact my original contact and be like, okay, do we want to do other guitars? I don't want to move on to someone else if you're my point of contact right, because I've right. gotten emails from eight different people from your company. I right. have a feeling it's a third-party marketing thing or whatever. So there's a bunch of people just all trying to get clients going or something. I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works over there, but I, I like the guitar. It's a good guitar. This Hard Luck Kings, 500, 500 bucks a guitar. If you want five hundred bucks a guitar, sell them oh for five hundred bucks, dude. Each. Like for, list each one for five hundred dollars. There's so many excellent guitars that you could get. Yeah, are you? Aren't aren't those guilds like the the cheaper version four ninety nine? I was thinking the deluxes were no. I think they're seven the ninety nine, or the, the the deluxes are six ninety nine or something. Like the cheaper ones that have the open coils, I think, are four ninety nine. Okay. I haven't played them, but aren't the cheaper Yamaha Rev Rev Stars under yeah, five hundred? Those are like three ninety nine or something like that. Um, There's obviously so many... PRS just came out with the SECE twenty four that everyone's flipping right. out about. That's five hundred dollars. Yeah, like. And if you all, really want a purple guitar, I bet you can find one for way less than 500 bucks. Yeah. I will say that that, you know, the fire birdie style thing. If, okay, here's what we'll do. If you were going to pick one of these, what would it be? I'm going to pick that Firebird sort of thing. I'm not going to be 500 bucks for it. No way. Can I pick this like harmony arch top that's over <laughs> on the side? <laughs> well, I think if you wouldn't pick these up. I think even for if you paid a thousand bucks for all five, I think you would have room to be like, hey, throw that in. <laughs> I got to grease the wheels on this. This, this, these guitars all just, they are, look bad. The photo doesn't help. The, well, like when I but got even the close up photos, like they all just look ever so slightly off. Everything, like the, every edge looks a little bit wrong. Yeah. Which is like, it's, it was, can I just pass? I, it, oh, yeah, I just want to take, I choose no guitar. Sure. <laughs> Where's the bass? Where's the bass? Steve wants the bass. Obviously I take the Telecaster. Okay. I All mean, right. if I, if gun to my head, you must pick a hard luck Kings guitar. I guess I'll take the Telecaster. I've been trying to talk myself into getting this, uh, this GB bender bridge that i demoed um, oh yeah in florida the, is it the tri bender or something like i forget what it's called uh centavo or something like yeah. that they sell yeah. it on all parts it's that like, thing looks so cool it's like 299 it's a no drill no modification what? needed because it's it's a it's part of the metal of the ashtray bridge oh so it, okay so it wouldn't work on my telecaster no it needs a classic ashtray mm. bridge i that's still cool I've been thinking about the Jennings would take it. I know. I've been thinking about buying it. And I think would your Titan take it? Does it have a no? Because it's got a half. 
Oh, it needs the full, the full it needs ashtray. The full, yeah. But I have that that cheapy. But I think I, uh, I what it was, what was the cheapy, uh, the the Leo James telly. I could put it on there, but no, I think I want to put it on the Jennings. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna put it on. Yeah. I, I I was hovering over the uh, the button to buy it the other day, and then I chickened out because <laughs> it's, it's like I want to do this because I had a lot of fun playing it for like the yeah. twenty minutes that I got to play it. Yeah. Am I gonna incorporate that into anything in my life? Do I need to worry about that? I should just, I just want to have it. Dude, you just put it on a video. If you're worried about the video like performance, then put it on a, a pedal that you do at, for the Patreon. Um, I mean, an- another thing is like, I, I don't, <laughs> this is a dumb thing. I don't have any, any way to get affiliate links off of it or anything like that. But like I should up, for my own should, mental health. Should we be sh- shooting all parts an email and just saying, Hey, we just bought this. We want to link back to you. Do you do affiliates? If I was going to shoot all parts in email, I'd beg them for. <laughs> that's that's fair. Uh, I don't want to do that though. I feel like for my own mental health and sanity, mm-hmm. as someone who does this as my living, every now and then I need to buy something. Sure. And I, I'm feeling like maybe I should. I I want to buy it if I'm going to get it. Ryan this is where I'm living right now. Um. Yeah. I, I was just thinking there are some folks who could help you buy it. And those folks are the folks who I'm not going to, I'm not going to use Patreon funds to buy a thing just cause I want it. Ultimately, like whether it's coming from one side of your personal budget or another side of your personal budget, any of it could be Patreon money. It's like when you piss in the ocean and then the ocean, like three weeks later you go in and like the water splashes in your face Pit, your piss is potentially splashing on your face. It doesn't matter where when I piss. Doesn't the, matter where the dollars come. When from. I piss in the ocean, it's to send a personal message to the whales. I'm like, hey, watch it. I'm disrespecting you by doing this. Uh, if you want to support this nonsense, head on over to patreoncom <laughs> No one wants to support what I just cycle said. Humcast, <laughs> uh, for as little as a dollar a month, or as much as whatever you want. Uh, you can support this program. Uh, at any donating tier, I am now uploading the audio format of this mm-hmm. show on there. So if you're an audio listener, um, you know, you jump on there. It basically for like $11 a year because you get a discount if you do a year. You'll listen to all of our episodes ad free. That's just kind of to offset uh, the the Spotify thing. And if enough people jump on Patreon that uh, we make no money on Spotify, that's okay. I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, me too. But, uh, it, you know, if that drives you nuts, that's what's there for. At the $5 level, I've got some stickers and pics to send you. And at the $10 level, I got some uh, exclusive stickers and pics and a pin and whatever other kind of swag is laying around my house that we get from people. A lot. Of, I've been doing this when I buy a pedal. Um, we I Maybe I should do this with your stuff too. Do you keep your pedal swag and stuff? Oh, I keep it all in the boxes, and it, and it box, goes just with in the, case. It later. goes with the pedals when I sell them. I've been taking the pedal swag and the picks and stuff, and I've been throwing those into Patreon. Oh, okay, and I see over there in our String Joy box there's some String Joy stickers. So sure, I need grab to, them. I need to remember to take those with me. Uh, so all kinds of stuff like that. Go check it out. Link down below. Ryan, this episode is also brought to these fine folks by uh, Wong's Amplifiers. That's right, Steve. Let me grab my Wong's. Grab your Wong's. Is that which mod? Is that the OD fifteen? Ah, you can tell OD, it's a OD, real head because it is heavy. It's the OD thirty. So Wong's they make tube amps. They basically are making uh, what they like to call Chinese boutique. Right. Um, some of these are are uh, some of their amps are PCB wired amps on high quality pcb they're double thick they're made with high quality c- components and some of the products that they sell are actually hand wired amps on turret board so yeah. they've got like different price points there i have the the mini five you have i think the vt1 plus yeah. this od30 I've got a little one watt amplifier steve's got the five watt one i've got this thing uh they're great amplifiers they they're well built. I've been impressed with the quality every single time. They've got a fun name. You can pronounce it Wong's if you want. You can pronounce it Wang's. Yeah. It's up to you. I like to I'm I'm in the Wang's camp. I like to say Wang's. Yeah. I I know, you know, some of their branding has embraced the Wang's. Uh their slogan is uh it takes balls to play Wang's. Yeah. So I, I don't really love that. 
Uh, but you know, that's, that's not up to me. They do have a sense of humor over there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you have a sense of humor and you want to have an amp that doesn't have your standard everyday branding on it, it's a little bit different. People are going to stop and be like, what's a Wangs? What's a Wongs? What's going on here? What do you got there? You like to be a little bit different from everyone else, but you still want basically a boutique style amp experience, like a true tube experience made the old school way. That's what they do over there. Yep. They, I, I stand by their product. I, I think they've every, every wings amp that I've tried over the years, I've been like, yeah, this, that's, that's the real deal. They've got four Tolex options right now. The black, they've got Brown Tolex. They've got white Tolex, right? White. And they just started making uh, amps in red Tolex. Yeah. So you, if you, that, any of that sounds interesting to you. They've got all kinds of amps, Marshall style, Fender style. Do they have a Vox style? They probably have a Vox style. Go check it out. Yeah. Link down below because yeah. and their also, website has a lot of letters in it. Yeah. They've got like a Shopify. Go check it out. Go, go, go navigate their website. Uh, you know, the, the, the guy behind the U S distribution is an old friend of ours. So even if you're not shopping for an amp right now, go check it out just to see what, you know, this guy's doing over there. All right. Thanks wings. Ryan, this next ad was sent by Slam Slam Banchard. <laughs> He's probably never heard that before. By Sam Blanchard. This is a seven-string thing, handmade seven-string electric, Steinberger tuners, hand-wound single coil, about this listening, news, newly designed and handmade seven-string electric guitar. I build string instruments out of my home shop and have made several acoustic guitars, electric violins, electric guitars, some digital instruments. Uh, this instrument sounds and plays great. A few dents and scratches on the cedar back. Small imperfection in the neck. Not all, but only cosmetic. Here's the technical. Uh, some of these are really interesting, actually. Uh, it's a cedar body with a maple top plate. The neck is poplar with a steel bar inset to keep the neck straight. There's no truss on this. It's a glued set neck joint with a padauk. Padauk. Padauk fingerboard uh i think i got it right this time uh the frets are large stainless steel tang nips so no fret ends at the fingerboard edge frets recently leveled and polished no fret markers or side ducks how are you supposed to know where you are <laughs> the pickup is a single hand wound uh pickup 8,000 turns of 42 gauge wire 8.6k resistance custom 3d printed bobbin that slides into the top plate without removing the strings and the electronics are of that pickup it's just wired straight the output jack the electronics plate has standard holes for two pots if you'd like to add them or they will add them for 80 dollars extra it's a multi-scale i think that's a really interesting thing this thing being multi-scale this whole thing's wild so it's got just this whole combination of 3d printed and then like finally put together wood parts and then steinberger 40 to 1 gearless ratio Gearless, sorry, 40 to 1 ratio, gearless tuners, wireless guitar, six chrome and one black. When I look at this thing, are you done reading? I'm done. When I look at this thing, I try to imagine the person who made it. And there's two different types of people in oh my, my head. Gosh, these pickups are nuts. I, well, there's nuts on it, Steve. I know. There's bolts and nuts holding it together. Um, there's either like this wild-eyed, dark brown, hyper eccentric style character that's got the glasses that have different lenses that drop down and stuff, and they they just, they're just completely eccentric, mm-hmm. or it's just like the most boring like polo shirt tacked into cat tucked into khakis sort of dude who's just super hyper nerdy about details. Because this thing is. This is a trip. I've never seen, like, we've seen a lot of weird guitars, like, going to NAMM and stuff like that. Like, yeah. the the Boutique Builders uh, showcase where people try to outdo each other for weird and things like that. This is, this is doing that sort of thing. It's wild. Like, this person was just like, let's forget what guitars look like and start over. The pickup is really the thing that made me stop and go like, okay, I want to talk about this because it is like you hear like, oh, handmade pickup, homemade pickup or whatever. Mm-hmm. This guy 3D printed a bobbin and then instead of using off the shelf, you know, magnet poles, he's just got like Home Depot bolts and washers as his poles. 
And there's something about the blue 3D printed nature of many of the parts. Contrasting against the very kind of like raw lumber look of the rest of it that has this strangely futuristic by way of like Ikea sort of thing going on. Yeah. And there's so many decisions about the body. I don't even know where to start. Like, like, like the, the core of it is a headless guitar, a, a headless multi-scale guitar, but the details are something else. And it's got, it's got a very like raw, rough kind of handmade prototypey sort of thing. Like, th- like this is very prototypey. That's the yeah. thing to say about it, but there's something compelling about it. Like, I don't want to play it, but I like looking at it. I really, I want to know what other things this guy's made. It's such a, yeah, Interesting right. Looking, and the three D the three D printed bridge and stuff like every part of it is 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 interesting and new and different. And the, the way the 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 wood steps on the back, like why why did he make that decision? Like I want to I want to hear this guy talk about this, not because I'm gonna agree with everything that he says, but I want to hear his thought process. You right, know? right. I think this is like. Okay, so, okay, pros and cons. I have no idea how well 3D printed stuff is going to hold up in this type of use. Sure. I just don't. I feel like that bridge might well, wear I think the, out. I think the pickup will be totally fine forever. The pickup will be fine. I think, you know, the... the I do have questions about the bridge as well. Hardware jack. The bridge and the, the nuts isn't as concerning to me because it's a headless, so it, the nuts really just providing kind of a fulcrum point. Yeah, I don't think it matters as much. Also, it's interesting that it looks like the nut was printed and then shaped. Yeah. yeah. Like, so he could have made it out of some other material, but he chose to print the material and then shape it. But here's the thing. So this is 1250. That's I, a lot for something that looks prototypey. I feel like if I saw this in a guitar store, though, had the chance. One, if I knew how to play. Problem one. Seven string. I don't know how to play a seven string guitar. Problem two. I barely know how to play it. No. Uh, <laughs> but so seven strings a little like out. It's a lot outside of like what I can do, like know how to do with the guitar. So I yeah. don't even know how exactly I would judge whether or not this is like good or not. Right. But I think if I saw this in like a guitar shop, I would be curious and I'd want to pull it down. Oh, I definitely want to try it. And for 1250, you know, you can't, I don't think you can. I think this guitar looks like the effort was worth 1250. Like if it plays as good as it looks, does that make sense? Because I feel like to get, I feel like we've seen a lot of amateur builds on here. On this the, looks like it was that don't look good. It looks like it was made someone who knew exactly what they were doing and they knew how to execute it. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is maybe the the second or third version in the development of a guitar that's going to take uh, five versions until they're ready to take it to production. You and know, that's fair. That's it feels fair. like it's two versions away from production. Because, like I keep saying, it looks prototypey. It's a proof of concept. I think it's just always going to look. Pro- I mean, there's some stuff on the back that could be sanded out, but I guess they mentioned that in the right. Like the it's listing. it's clearly like like there's some rough edges going on here and stuff like that. I'm just saying, I think 1250 is like probably the absolute. I I understand, highest, but I could see like something. I could see the two more versions down this guitar being in the boutique guitar showcase at NAMM. Sure. And at that point, it's a $5,000 guitar. Right. Totally. Like, I don't look at this and see a $1,200 guitar, but I see the builder headed that way. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I see... I think we're on the same page. I think I think if this did... Here's the thing. If this builder became a known builder right. in this very specific scene of strange... Uh, progressive modern mm-hmm. instruments. Yeah. 
this as a prototype would eventually command a high price, not because Tens of right, not because of the quality. Of dollars. It would be a, like a like a modern alembic sort of thing, right? You know, like oh well, this is where it started. You know, like this is like this is like the uh, the first version Parker Fly before he started. You know, like making them to sell sort of thing hundreds. Like that. Billions of, of dollars. dollars. Yeah. The next billions and billions. The reincarnated Jimi Hendrix who's reincarnated his soul into uh, the body of the 12 year old girl who's okay. just going to shred up and down this thing. Uh, Ryan. She's going to, she's going to make this thing the hot new guitar of yeah. the future for a thousand years. Jamie Hendrix. Jamie Hendrix. Uh, you just said Jimi Hendrix, and I thought of a song. When I say Jimi Hendrix, what song do you think of? Like, what's the first song that pops into your head? Uh, F- Foxy Lady. Okay. What did you think? Uh, are you going to go my way? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong artist! But that is what came into my head. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think mine was <laughs> probably not the best best one to pick like people will probably be upset about that and yours is just like wrong dude <laughs> you said Jimi hendrix and i went and then i went wait it's lenny kravitz <laughs> it's i don't think it's even lenny playing that part who is it the other guitarist in his band oh no. i could be wrong that feels like a lie i could be wrong i mean it could be true i don't know you got anything else to say about this, Ryan? No, I like. It's hard for me to imagine paying that much, but it's also like so far out of my wheelhouse that maybe I have no clue what I'm talking about. So no, that's it's, a it's fair assessment. Very interesting to look at, though, and it looks like this person knows how to build stuff, and they're working on building, uh, you know, the ideas that are floating around in their heads. You ready to do some mail? Yeah, let's do some mail. Mail time. Get my blade mail out. Mail time. Mail, you look like you're going to stab me. I'm going to stab Steve. Ew, Things are about camera. to get violent. Yeah, Im- imagine if I stabbed you on camera and then I edited the footage and published it. <laughs> so everyone's like, we all saw him stab it. Yeah, because I edited it and published it. Or I edited it out. Yeah, yeah, and you then, just edit it out, and somehow you gaslight me into finishing the episode. Like, so all you of a sudden, there's the episode with a bleeding wound. And there's just this hard cut, and like I'm just the rest of the time I'm just like, I got my hand like this. You're breathing real funny. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what do we have here? What we got, got over there, a man? handwritten note. Dear Ryan, I'm Nico. I have a YouTube channel called Death Ray Cat. I talked to him on uh, Instagram or TikTok or TikTok or something like that. And he's like, can I do stuff? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Because I love watching your videos. Um, I do lessons on music. I think, okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll start back here. I have a YouTube channel called death Ray cat, where I do lessons on music. I think is cool. I.e. rockabilly, surf, blues, psychobilly, rock and roll, you know, all the good stuff. I have put a shirt in this bag of swag. Also some records from my band, Death Ray, X-Ray Cat Trio. We are kind of a big deal here in the UK. Not really in parentheses, <laughs> but I thought you would dig us uh, as you obviously have great taste. Anyways, just wanted to say thanks for the cool vids and keep up the good work. Uh, signed L Neo, El Nico, El Nico, El Nico. He drew a picture of a cat with a gun there's, shooting a television. There's some cool lessons on here. I'll have a link down no, below. He's, he's a great player. Uh, like, like if you like, uh, like RJ Ronquillo mm, mm-hmm. and like players like that, you're going to, you're going to love this guy. Well, like the last video they published was rock and roll guitar lessons. The cramps green door. There we go. Cool poster. Oh, nice. We got a beer koozie here. You want to throw that in the swag, Steve? The beer koozie? Sure yeah. thing. We'll do. I'm not trying to pawn it off. But I just don't. I, I drink beer so fast it doesn't get cold. Wow. We got a couple stickers, too. Yeah. I'll keep one for me. Oh, we got a couple shirts. Look at that. I'll wear this. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah. I'll put that on right now as soon as I finish going through the box. Uh, ooh, this one's Whoa. fun. It's got uh, it's a tie dye sort of thing, and it's got that Vox Phantom Mobile on there. Oh, nice! Oh, that's fun. 
I'm sorry, Steve. I don't think I'm going to share these shirts with you. That's fine. I don't think any of them will hit me. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, th- a third shirt. So many shirts. I'll hold this one up. You figure that other stuff out. Jeez. Check that shirt out. You, That's you're really pretty similar to that, that white one, too. You're really spoiling me here. There are There's there's a little guy here, X-Ray Cat Trio, and Harriet Hyde, and then three full-size albums here. That's very Ridiculous. nice. I'm going to need a bigger record cabinet. Yeah, I like to listen to records like Saturday and Sunday mornings when I'm making breakfast mm. for the family and stuff like that. I have a whole setup in my uh, kitchen area. That's what I should do. I listen to records sometimes when I'm folding clothes. Live at the Jenny? That'd be fun to have a live album, like a live Dinosaur Ghost album. Don't Put give, that on my list of things that I'm ideas. never going to get done. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone wants to send stuff, the address has been up here. I am it's right here. Very much looking forward to listening to those records and wearing the. I got to wear a shirt right now. While Ryan is changing shirt, you got anything else new? I don't think we we have no, anything I don't. else new. Uh, this episode and Ryan changing his shirt is brought to you. Should we do that? Yeah. Is that weird? It's brought to you by Chase Bliss. Uh, if, <laughs> I'm if back. Ryan's. <laughs> shirtless back one makes you want to chase bliss you might have a problem <laughs> but you can solve that problem by going to chasebliss.com and buying a really cool pedal like this one the therme they've also got the mood mark ii mm-hmm. and uh i don't know what else they got a bunch of stuff they got go check so it out so much stuff go buy uh, every single chase Bliss pedal buy two of them just in case uh you know you want you always want to have a backup you got two different boards you need to pack them all out but build two complete chase bliss pedal boards just to have redundancy exist. yeah i kind of want one i kind of want to do that you want two you want I one? just want one chase bliss pedal board okay and then after i build one then maybe i'll build a second one uh i don't know go to chase bliss.com even if you're not going to buy a pedal now get on their mailing list that way you, you can find out about new pedal releases in the future this pedal this pedal this podcast is also brought to you by artist works oh yeah Artist Works is a lesson site, but all of those lessons are put together in like single class passages, taught pack, right. packages, taught by like a master teacher. Yeah. They're like master classes. Yeah. Only like you can send videos of yourself playing to, for example, Paul Gilbert. Yeah. He'll watch the video. I don't know how it works if he does it, if he does replies to everyone, but he's done like 14,000 replies. Where yeah. he'll watch your video, and then he'll show you like other things you could be doing. Like, oh, you were doing that here. Check this out, and like, oh, here's a thing you could learn. And, like, here's some advice for you. And, like, like he'll sh- Paul Gilbert will tell you what to play, and you'll listen to him because he's Paul Gilbert. Why wouldn't you listen to Paul Gilbert? So if you like the sound of that, check out the link down below. Artist Works and True Fire have been sponsoring us. They're uh, kind of sister companies there uh, for the past two months. So give them. A big thanks by clicking the link. Uh, you can save 30% off with code 60Cycle on 30. No, just 60Cycle 30, right? 60Cycle 30. There you go. I've, <laughs> I've, I've had it down here on the screen. So <laughs> there you go. You ready to hit this topic? I'm ready to hit the topic, Let's Steve. Hit the topic with our hands. Oh, I don't. I didn't want to do violence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just kidding. Just touch. Just, just read the topic. Okay, this was uh, suggested by Rye Anderson. How about the people that say punk bands only know three chords, despite the majority of popular popular music only using three chords? Lol. Like, most, like, memorable songs are, whether they have, well, whether they technically have three chords or 30 chords, mm-hmm. most popular songs, the part of it that's popular, the part that gets stuck in your head is very simple. Like, we can agree on that, right? Like, there's not a lot of, like, 12-chord hooks out there. Sure, yeah, yeah. You you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, probably I would would venture, though, you know, it's... uh, I think there are... There's probably a a few. There was this moment in the 90s where a bunch of songs got released that were all basically just canon and D. 
Right. Like Blues Traveler has a song that's just canon and D. I forget if it's Hook or I think it's Hook or is it Run Around? Right. One of those is canon and D. So it's got a bunch of chords. Me, uh, Mr. Jones, Counting Crows is all, is like in that same vein. It's got a bunch of chords. I know there's but, uh, exceptions, but, but I'm talking generally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Third Eye Blind, Semi Charm Life is three. I think there might be a fourth chord somewhere in like the bridge, but it's pretty much three chords. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be willing to guess that, let's say 28%, just to pick a random number, but a significantly mm-hmm. high number, 28% of songs that feature, you know, chord playing sure. or could be played with chords are just GCD. Or, yeah, that's, or that, key shifted around. That progression. Sure. Like, it could yeah. be in a different key, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just G, C, D. You could play it G, C, D on an acoustic guitar if you can sing in that register. And you're there. Like, most country songs, most pop songs. Yeah. Like, I, I have a feeling that's, that's like, a significant amount of popular songs. Wait, is it just, most or is it 28%? It's 28%. Most of 28%. <laughs> Most of 28%, 100% of the time. Right, right. <laughs> I'm just making up numbers on the fly. But, like, it is it is a high percentage. And, right. And, and, then the, and then you want that, you want 32% on top of that? Throw in an E minor. Yeah. It, you it know, went, now you got a four chord song that is most songs. Yeah, once you throw in that that minor, minor chord in there, you've got the axis progression. Right. And that's, like... It's like every so song. many songs, it's so many, so songs. many songs. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think people make, f- here's the thing about punk rock. It doesn't really matter how many chords are being used. It's right. How they're being used. You can, sure. you can play three chords and sound like some sort of like masterful, uh, classical guitar yeah. finger picking master, or you could, Really, like, in punk rock, you're playing one chord because it's a power chord and you're just moving it around. Oh. Like, it's, yeah. not, it's not like you're memorizing jazz chords or whatever. Sure. You know? sure. But it's like, it's it's more about the motion. It's more about the dynamics. It's more about the aggression than it is about, right. you know, perfectly voicing a, a, a ninth chord or something I like agree, that. I agree with you. Uh, it is about the motion. And, it, you know, whether or not a song's good it's like an analogy about boats. Like it's not about the size of the boat. Like it's not about the number of chords, the size of your boat. This analogy being chords is about the motion of the ocean, you know, the, the movement of those, those chords. Mm. So if you have three chords with excellent movement, it's going to get the job done. Right. It's about what you're communicating and how you're, how you're communicating it. It's about whether or not you can connect to a groove that's going to get in people's heads. It's about how the lyrics and the singing, the singing and the other instruments connect to what you're doing and how you connect to what they're doing. Like yeah, their yeah. chord count is a stupid thing to be concerned with. Sure. Sure. If you can't, if you look at a song and you're like, oh, I can't play this because there's too many chords, that's a barrier that you're hitting yourself. I don't look at someone who's a skillful songwriter and think, oh, there is a minimum amount of chords that they need to incorporate into a song for it to be brilliant. I think a song can be brilliant with one chord. Like, if you can write a song and it's one chord, but you can capture people's ears Mm -hmm. and you can make a song that people want to hear over and over again. That's masterful. That is a skill that people would die for. Like that is beautiful. It's amazing. If you can do that is of course, it's also amazing. Amazing. If you can, you know, write classical gas or songs like it, you know, or, or, you know, like all the other songs that, never repeat the same chord and they just keep going and going and going exploring new sonic uh territory with every variation of chord there's ever been yeah i i always i th- always think it's just like a you don't have to like every style of music um and i i do think very applicable here is there is an old country quote 
mm. folk music. Quote. Which country? Uh, American country. Ah, okay. Uh, I don't know who it's attributed to. I want to like say it's attributed to, like Porter Wagoner, but it, it's probably not. Uh, but that you know, the soul of country music is that it's just three chords and the truth, right? And I think in a lot of ways, like that feeds o- that feeds over into like any genre. Mm-hmm. Like uh, if if the music you're making is resonating with people, then it doesn't matter how simple or complex it is. Right. Like if your goal of your song is to be a guitar virtuoso, then yeah, like maybe you need more than three chords to accomplish that. I have to admit, like if I went to go see uh, Steve Vai play and he is like, you know what guys, I'm tired of all these uh, dive bombs and all these finger gymnastics. I'm just going to play like this folk song that I wrote. And then after that, I'm going to play a little like acoustic sort of thing. And I'm not going to mm-hmm. shred anymore. I'm just going to, you know, I, I I'm, I'm fine. Uh, just, just playing closing time from now on. Oh yeah. I would yeah. be, I would be amused, <laughs> but then I'd also be bummed. Like if, if, if Steve Vai did a whole career change where he's like, I'm just like an acoustic drummer now. And I just kind of sing her right. song. Right. Right. I bet like, something has been lost. I, I would say that something has been lost in the world. Like, we needed Steve Vai to be Steve Vai. We didn't need him to be, you know, a, 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 you know whatever chord strummer, singer-songwriter, or whatever. And I'm sure he could attack that with masterful skill. Absolutely. You know, you, but also, you, like, we need them all. We, like, I don't want to lose a Steve, Steve Vai, but also don't want to lose, you know, a Jack Johnson or whatever. Yeah. I hate that you bring this up because i saw this this morning i'm probably not gonna do it but uh steve Vai and joe satriani are on tour right now Uh uh-huh and they're playing at harrah's uh which is it would be kind of funny to it's like 55 bucks a ticket that's not bad plus fees and whatever right but it's like 55 bucks it's not bad it's a friday night i could go after work what when is that what day it's in may may 10th i think i might have something i don't you know, is it, it's not sold out. No, I think it was just announced pretty recently. Oh. So there's still tickets left. There's what if pro- we went? probably not a lot of tickets left. What if we went, Steve? Maybe we should Maybe we for should a guitar experience. Yeah. I wonder we'd how much be the, we'd, pro- we'd probably be the least talented guitarist there. Like, I mean, in the audience. In the you audience, know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, every, no, I got you. Every single person who's a fan of those guys is probably a guitarist. And they're probably way, they're probably way better than us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this whole thing, I, I, I always think it's reductive to just, you know, to say that music is bad for certain things. The flip side of it is there's like, uh, there are pop songs that are extremely complicated that still get dismissed because, Oh, it's just like a stupid pop song. So it's like, there's so much going on. I know like, you know, I, I can't think of any songs offhand, like that have those kinds of changes in it. But if you want to learn more about like, Oh great about like what makes the song great, go check out what makes the song great uh, over at uh, on the Rick Beato YouTube. I don't know if a lot of people know about that channel, Steve, yeah. like maybe you should put a link down below so people can find it. And on the flip side, he needs, he needs subs on the flip We're gonna side. Help him out. Um, if you want to know what makes this song suck, mm. uh, head on over to the Pat Finnerty. Yeah. Uh, YouTube. I mean, he's the originator of that format. And so, yeah, everyone's I, I, very familiar with I him. I don't think he is, but, but for the sake of as argument, far as I'm concerned, he is for, for the sake. Oh, he, he is the originator of what makes the song suck. Yes. Right. Right. Um, but I'll just, I don't what think makes, I have anything else what makes say. this song anything, anything right, like, yeah. like he's the guy as far oh, as I'm okay. concerned. Yeah. As far as you're concerned. Yeah. yeah. I don't have anything else to say about this. All right. Do you, um, Sounds like you do. I mean, I could rant forever. I could just keep going and going and going. I'll say that that I have this memory of when I was like a teen. Uh, there was like a Devo song that came on the radio or something like that. Yeah. And my dad, being the the burnt out nineteen seventies boomer that he is, like, oh Devo, oh these guys, oh, what do they only know like like two song, two chords or whatever? And he, my dad has barely any musical knowledge as far as how to play musical instruments. He likes music, but sure. it, it was a funny comment that stuck in my memory forever because in my mind, Devo were brilliant. Right. Devo are 
masters of a genre of a craft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they have an incredibly impressive career to me. But then my dad hears Devo and he's like, he probably just hears a lot of beep, boop, 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 beep, sure, boop, boop, sure. You know, like it, it doesn't sound like Led Zeppelin to him. So he's like, oh, what is this? Two chords or three chords or something like that. And it's like, it's, it's so much more than that. Like you could do the same thing. You could be like, oh, uh, uh, talking heads. Oh, what is it? sounds like three chords. Yeah. But listen to the rhythms. Yeah. Listen yeah. to the songwriting. Listen to uh, the just the stories that are being woven throughout. Like it's, there's so much more to music than chord count. There's so much more to music than how complicated your time signature is or yeah, any of yeah. that, the skillful, masterful stuff that's amazing too and great too. Like it's great when people really master their instrument and can just rip up and down the neck and play in strange time signatures and play chords that only three people have ever heard. And, you know, the, the third one, you know, it pleased the Lord and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like what the standard 12 bar blues progression that everyone is supposed to know, except for me. Well, I should know, but I don't, uh, that's only three chords. Yeah. Right. It's the, well, it's you can throw, you throw, you throw in the fourth chord to, to spice it up on that turn. Oh, right. right. On yeah. the turn. Yeah. You throw in yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. you got that turn around. Forgot there. about that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's, it's straightforward. It's simple. It's kind of like the Taylor Swift argument. Don't, we're going to talk about Taylor Swift okay, again. Here we go. The, the old Taylor Swift argument. The old Taylor Swift argument. argument. Yeah. I think somebody figured out that like 20, I think it was like 21% of her songs have the exact same chord progression. Yeah. Sounds like she should start um, a, a band with Mike Ness. And, <laughs> <laughs> and people, people, you know, people have criticized that her, her vocal range is not very broad. And I brought both of these. Sounds like up. a broad to me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow i'm sorry <laughs> low-hanging fruit <laughs> uh, so i brought this up to your very swifty sister once, okay. and her response was like yeah that's why we like that's why uh, like that's a big draw is that at the end of the day like these are all songs that like people can sing along to and they're all songs that like where even if you've never heard the song before, the song feels at least has a little bit of a familiar feel to it. So there's like just common themes across like multiple albums of her music because they rely on very similar song structures and very similar like music motifs uh, that just kind of like, yeah, you can argue that it's simple, but it's effective when, you know, you can sell, I think it was like 400,000, 500,000 tickets in Los Angeles. Right. Like, obviously. Half a million people. Yeah, obviously, like, it's those working are for only someone. the people who could get in. You, right. Like, imagine right. if space was unlimited, how many seats. Yeah. If, if they could just build a, a theater bigger and bigger and bigger to fit the demand, how big that theater would be. I want, I want there to be, like, I want an artist. Someone's going to tell me that this has been done. Maybe it's been done, but I want an artist who's like gets a secret deal with like a venue mm -hmm. and they're like, here's what, here's what I want to do. We're going to start with, you, they already know that they can sell. They're going to, we're going to start with three nights in this location. As soon as the third night fills up, we're going to open a fourth night as soon as the fourth night and just, you just keep right. doing but it. What if you get stuck there forever? And they build hey. a, they build a city around you, and you you perform every night. That's now it's just called a res. I mean, and maybe that's the thing. Now that's just called a Las Vegas residency. Sure. Like when Celine Dion, is she still? I don't know if she's still doing her Vegas residency. Isn't she, like, tragically ill? I, is she? I thought she was. Ooh, I thought I she was I better. Heard, no, I think I heard something. No, I think it's like a life for everything. Okay, well, sorry, I don't know. Sorry, so, you know, we uh, no no shade on Celine but, Dion. But my point being is like, so if she's not doing it anymore, hopefully, if she, she's comfortable with whatever she's doing now, uh, but when she was doing her residency, or when these big artists do these residencies for like every weekend, for week after week after week, like presumably those shows now in a place like Vegas, like it's super touristy, right? So it's a little different, but like. They just keep selling tickets. They're right. smaller venues too. I would, I just would love to be like, I, I'd love you to see what would happen like, if like Lo Taylor Swift at the Rose Bowl or whatever 
how many consecutive you, you get breaks. Like okay. maybe you only do three shows in a row and then you take a two days off. Then you do another three, but I want to know how many nights that this could go for. I, I don't know how we got off topic onto this, but I'm here for it. And I'm going to continue. It. I'm just saying three okay. chords is enough chords to so sell out a stadium. Here's the thing. If you, if you, we know how Taylor Swift fans are like Taylor, go more than one. Taylor Swift can do a West coast tour where people from the entire West coast would make a pilgrimage to her. Yeah. She could call it a West coast tour and it would only be Los Angeles. Right. But if she stayed there long enough, she could tour for a full year in like five locations yeah. and just spend two months in each place. And people would travel from far enough to see her if she did a show a week or two shows a week or something like that yeah. for, and then she would have time during the week to go like, hang out, go to the beach, you know, be a tourist, you know, like go to the zoo or whatever, you know, like go, go to Griffin park, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she would be having, have a great time on her tour. She wouldn't have to go to all these locations. She would just like, she would pick, like a, a a location, she could build a little temporary city. She could do her own Coachella somewhere. Like I don't really care about her music. Like it's not appealing to me. To me but the no, spe- it's just like the a thought experiment. and the thought experiment of it, and just like the reality of her fandom is undeniable. Yeah, you're like, just in LA. What, you're the, like up there for Pedal Expo. You're hanging out with Paulo, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh hey Taylor Swift. Right, right. Because she comes. What do, you, to, what do you think about those new MXR pedals? She's she's shopping for new fuzz pedals and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, she, she loves fuzz pedals. You don't hear it in the music because she thinks that they're too special for her music. So like, I don't play the right chords for fuzz pedals. Yeah, I only play three chords. You need yeah. that fourth chord for a fuzz pedal. You know, like that. It is true though that no, like, founding father, founding member, elder. Right. of rock and roll played simple music. It's all just like these vast tapestries of jazz chords and uh, progressive melodies and stuff like that. Yeah, Chuck Berry definitely did not play the you know, same song. He, he was top of he, that's, who, that's where I was going. Chuck Berry, every song brand new, Unique. never re, never repeated a chord. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mm-hmm. could say that for Little Richard, you could say it for Elvis, yeah. you know, like all, you know, all these founding members of rock yeah, and roll yeah. you know like you, you, even moving into like funk and stuff like that every bass line in funk is mm-hmm. completely new and original you know like yeah james jamerson was it james jamerson no it's uh damn it it's the other guy the other guy definitely did not ever play a an entire song with just one note like when i think of funk bass Never once do they return to the to the root. Never. You only hit it once, and only as a special treat. No, We're being no. extremely facetious right now. <laughs> but still, in all those examples that we were being facetious about, Chuck Berry, I think of him as a very skilled and accomplished guitarist. Larry Graham. Larry Graham famously played one right. note, like just a one note bass line like like funk basis i wish i had those chops oh yeah kidding me but yeah like you 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 play and play octaves and you're gonna be a lot of the way there yeah you know like it's simple can be brilliant is what we've spent 40 minutes of our lives dissecting yeah it was only sometimes i think simple is is a lot of times i think simple is more brilliant than complex it takes a lot of skill to distill something down into its purest element. Like that's like if, if we were talking about metal work, like for like reducing something down to its purest element, that's a skill. Mm-hmm. That's what it is to make a, make good music is to reduce it down. Cause you, you could, you could complicate, you can overcomplicate all sorts of songs. Right. All right. right. Like, we got to stop talking about this cause I'm in a loop. All right, this last ad was sent by Dave Santander. It says a helmet guitar, football helmet shaped guitar in silver. It has five interchangeable face mask colors to suit your team. Built in speaker and amp, quarter inch end pin jack hidden in the tailpiece, plugs into any external amp for when you want that extra boost. Powered by a single nine volt battery, unique football shaped guitar picks, wall hanger included for display of the guitar. Uh, some notes on the 
I don't care. <laughs> Helmet guitar. I think it has a built-in speaker. It does have a built-in speaker. I said that. I know, but I... Is the brand of this guitar Helmet guitar? Yes. I originally saw this thing in the ad, and I thought that was some sort of little amp. No, that's the tuner. I was like, that's a weird looking little Look, amp. Look, there's I the amp. I see it it's now. The, I see it. Piece. Putting the amp in the earpiece is pretty like aesthetic. It like that's why I didn't notice it because it's like, oh, I'm hyper familiar with football helmets. That's just part of a football helmet. So here's okay. Problem one. Problem in the first. Oh, you see problems. Here? Oh, here we go. Okay, so I'm looking at this picture, and this is the silver one, but there are a bunch of other colors to choose from. But for the silver one, your choices are silver and black uh, because it's got these uh, other... Oh, so you're going to call out the teams. So you got silver and black, silver and gold, silver and red, silver and gray, silver and white. You don't really have a lot of team choices here with the silver helmet. Like, what if you're a Detroit Lions fan? You need that silver and blue. I have no idea. Silver and blue. That's when you get the spray paint out. I'm very disappointed in these choice of colors. I don't even know, like silver and black. I guess if you're a Raiders fan, weirdly the silver and gold, the helmet shape that's got to be some kind of collegiate. Kind of weirdly works as a guitar. It shape. does <laughs> with with the the face guard thing. That's yeah. like a lower horn that you can rest rest it on your on your lap and stuff. It's a it's essentially a banjo with a funny shape on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, silver and red. Is that like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Maybe. I, I, this dude, is, I have no I idea know. what, like, I, I know what color the Chargers are or were. Are they still blue and gold? Yeah. So all right. You could not that's do the all, Chargers. That is literally all I've got. Uh, I have no idea. That's just because I live in San Diego yeah. where they used to be. Like, the good. So, okay. Here's something dumb. You want to hear something dumb? Tell me something I'm real dumb. The, I'm looking at the. Uh, I love that it comes with a wall hanger. Guitar. Okay. No. So I'm going to get to the wall hanger in a second. The football shaped guitar picks just seem like a problem to me. I don't know why. They're probably fine. Uh, the wall hanger, I stared at it for a good 30 seconds trying to figure out why Helmet Guitar Company is shipping you a mouth guard. <laughs> I was like, man, they're taking this like football theme pretty far. It would have been funny. If it comes with a freaking mouthpiece. If the wall hanger was themed perfectly to look like a mouthpiece. And then I realized, oh, that's a guitar. But you know, hanger. You, do you know why it comes with a, a wall hanger, and which is something you never see with any like guitar ever? Because this is not meant to be played. It's because meant to be it displayed. Is, it is meant to go straight into your man cave. Yeah, like this is this is this is a guitar manufactured for the express purpose of decorating your man cave. I mean, your man cave. If, if you've got. If you've got a crave for a football guitar man cave, then a helmet guitar is what you need. This I don't is, know. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not a sports guy, obviously. I feel like this is a pretty decent execution of this. This is $250. That's not bad. It is actually. I, I wanted to check, and this is uh looks like it's $50 cheaper than the cheapest Fernandez Nomad. Right. I'm seeing. And that's essentially what we're looking at here is. Like I, I am not expecting any sort of like high performance out of the little built-in amp. No, but it, the fact that it exists and it exists within the form of the helmet, like it does not interrupt the concept of the helmet at all, is pretty great. I wasn't, yeah, I was not expecting to like this ad so much. You're gonna get the color you want. You're gonna slap your favorite team's logo on the side. You're gonna put the mask on that face mask that you want. I guess um, you're gonna put this up next to your lazy boy in your basement or wherever you go to like watch the game. And now in the commercial breaks, you can pull this stupid looking helmet off the wall and practice your blues licks. B L O O Z. So Steve, here's the scenario. What's the scenario? I'm pitching a sports scenario. All right. All right. Hit me. You're in your man cave. Okay. Doing what you man crave. (laughs) I'm punching it up now. I'm working on my own joke. You're in your man cave working on your man cravings. Uh, you're watching your football game. Yeah. You've got your helmet guitar hanging on the wall next to your lazy boy. 
Sure. You are reclined. You're drinking your beers. You're eating your Cheetos. You're having a great time. Your team's up. Your team's up. Your team is up. They're up. The, the points are in their favor. Yeah. But and then at the very last minute, everything goes wrong. They lose so horribly. What would feel more satisfying than grabbing the helmet guitar that's themed after them off the wall and full on windmill smashing it into something in your man cave? Just let your man cravings fly in your man cave. That's where your man cravings belong. You know what, man? You've got, a cra- you've got a craving for destruction. You need to work out some aggression because the battle was fought and the battle was lost and you're all pent up now. What would feel better than that, Steve? For 250 bucks, it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> I mean, I got health insurance, so it's not cheaper than therapy. You're not going to hurt yourself. <laughs> but, uh... No, but I'm oh, saying you're, you're saying gonna your, pay $250. Your therapy is cheaper. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I, what I was going to say, though, is because this is a helmet guitar, you can pretty much smash it into anything, and it's going to be okay. You can smash it into another helmet. You could. Mm-hmm. You could have this guitar, and when your buddy comes over and he's a fan of a rival team, he can bring his helmet guitar over. Yeah. And you can in, in between the commercials, you can smash your helmet guitars against each other, just like we were watching in the game, except helmet to helmet context is legal now. Now, now imagine to escalate, to add a, a score multiplier onto your, your man cave, man craves. Right. What if you're also a huge fan of the band helmet? Oh. So you're saying that you should you could uh, you could get a helmet guitar to play in your helmet cover band that's themed after your favorite football helmet. Like it's it's like the world is aligning for you. Everything makes sense. It's mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. it's like God looked down from the heavens and decided to make a special treat just for you. I that feel- person exists out there. There's no way that person doesn't exist. There's someone out there who their favorite band is helmet i feel like if you are in that helmet cover band and you've got a helmet guitar um and it is sports themed you need to like dress up as a kicker because often uh the i feel the rising glory of the kicker on a a football team goes unsung there it is (laughs) ryan let's hit this adventure wake up your day you know, I let's hit this adventures club and get the hell out of here. I actually had a uh, a full album, a full helmet album. Yeah. By way of having a PC off road racing game. And this okay. was like in the early early two thousand, maybe late nineties. So I got, but it was like a CD ROM version of their album. You could put it in your in your in your stereo and it would play. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I used to do that with uh with the Command and Conquer CD. All of the audio tracks were like just as it, like you play the game, but there was also audio. I'm going to space. Was it that one with Tim Curry in it? No. no. Ah, Command and Conquer 2, I think it was. No, I only played the original. Command oh, and dude. Oh, I wish I could play it right now. Command and Conquer 2. Tim Curry in it is amazing. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to do Adventures Club. Yeah, yeah, so we got Hard Luck Kings, we got Helmet Guitar, and we've got Seven String Thing. I'm going Seven String, man. What do you got? You going Helmet? <sighs> They're all good. They all feel good. Are we going to have to spin the wheel? I'm going to have to spin the wheel on myself. You're I don't... going to spin the wheel? Okay, what are what two are you going You picked between? Seven String I'm Thing. I'm going Seven String. I kind of actually liked the helmet more than I thought I would. Sorry, hard luck kings. Whoops. <laughs> Pass cables are all over everything around here. <laughs> oh, tour, tour gear design. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to spin it. You always get to spin it. I don't always get to spin it. You spin it. That was a weak spin. That spin Steve. sucked. Oh, it landed on a spin again. Why was it so bad? Here, wait, let me, uh, I'll pull that away a little bit. There we go. It's still bad. It's really bad because it landed on me. It landed on you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I picked the helmet guitar. 
<laughs> Congratulations, Dave Santander. <laughs> if I considered it was another Dave Santander, I would have considered the other entries. But I didn't look. I don't look at the names when I pick, which makes it more fair. Ah, you won the next one, and I mean, then I won the next really one. Really, like dying. Well, out. sometimes, sometimes the, the bolt is a little bit too tight. There we go. Oh, that's a lot better. It's definitely you can hear it wobbling. And a one. You, I feel like you could do an, just an a, hey, guys, we're giving away some stuff. And then it's just ASMR of us whispering what we're giving away and sp the wheel spin. Hmm. What if what if for uh, me clearing out the affordable word pedals, what if I pulled up the wheel and was like, let's find out how many pedals I'm going to give away this episode. How, it's many, like, it how could, many triangles are on there? There's 14. This is riveting stuff. So you All right, could, tell us about the song. You could do. You could give away zero to four, one to fourteen pedals. That'd be a really weird episode. It's like, let's see how many pedals I'm giving away. Zero. Yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> uh, song for the podcast. Hey there, Ryan and Steve. I've been following your channel and podcast for a while. The podcast is always a great listen for me. Always during lunch Thank on you Mondays. For you take a long lunch, man. Congratulations. I found the channel through the Affordable Board series, but keep coming back for the weird reverb stuff that Ryan showcases on the channel. You might notice from the song, uh, the dark and ambient stuff is right up my alley. I'm a dark ambient artist from Finland. My project is named Outcry. This is going to be fun. I work with a lot of strange DIY instruments and also have a few kit guitars that I use frequently. I just finished a song that I felt I could send to you guys. As you keep saying, you're running low on songs. We always are. We're, we're always, even when we're not running low, we'll put them in the queue and maybe it won't get played for three months, but it'll get played. Yeah. Uh, all instruments are played by me and recorded in my home studio. Hope you enjoy it. All the best, Kenneth. Let's play the song.
It's like some movie soundtrack stuff. I really like that. I want to fall asleep to that. And it, the, this isn't something most people would probably say about that song, but I want it to be a lot longer because it's already like four or five minutes long, right? I think it was about five minutes. Yeah. About five minutes long. I need a version of that that is about at least 45 minutes long for me to be able to fall asleep to it. I'm a, I'm a bit of an insomniac, yeah, but man. the feeling that that gave me of this descending into dissonance, but also strangely warm dissonance. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's like the feeling of like, okay, I'm falling asleep now. It's going to take a little while, but my body's starting to do the sleep thing now. And I just need to make sure I stay locked into this and don't interrupt it. Cause if I interrupt it, then I won't fall asleep anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like I have to, I have to find that state and it feels like that is that state. Maybe uh, you just need to check out his band camp and see if there's anything longer. Or maybe I just need like sleeping pills or something. Yeah. All right. Bye everybody. Stay grounded. <laughs>